Right, this is my 1914 Peugeot. It's a special, really, but it's based on the Indianapolis car. And originally the car was built not by Peugeot, but by a group of people that Peugeot sponsored. And when the car was done, it was so successful, it then got a Peugeot badge. But the people who built it were known as the charlatans which is why obviously it's got the charlatan name on it and it's quite an intriguing story and if anybody's really interested we could probably make a video about that there are no spare twin cam 16 valve Peugeot engines anywhere so to have build a car like this we had to think of something different and we managed to find a 10 litre four cylinder Paul and Scott aeroplane engine, which is what you see here. It's overhead cam, very, very good design, five bearing crankshaft. Bit of fiddling about to fit it in a car, but not too bad. Again, we could make a video all about that, really, just fitting it in the car or turning it into a car engine from an aeroplane engine. John. <laughs> Got it just right. You know how close it is. What we've done, the Hall and Scott car, or the Peugeot, has um, got soft rear springs. Although they're beautiful springs with forged ends, they're just a little bit too light. We've noticed that when we drive it down a bumpy road really fast, the shock absorbers bump together. So We've now decided to introduce another leaf in the spring, which is what we're doing here. This is the new leaf. So we're now just about to mid weld the joint in the middle there, so that when it goes up and down, it don't spring apart. Oh, look at that. Lovely weld. You can see that it's now joined all those leaves together nicely. So hopefully this will make the car handle a bit better as well and certainly feel a lot nicer probably on the road. Obviously because we've now altered the depth of the spring we've had to make the spring cleats longer. To get these old fashioned cars to handle the springs are one of the most important bits on the car. Heat this rivet up until it's almost sparking. The only important bit about this is it just locates the cleat. This is where the guesswork comes in because we're not clever enough to do it properly but it's managed to work for a whole lifetime and I have won a lot of races with these methods so stick to what you know we ought to have a row in a minute John yeah <laughs> yeah what's with all this guesswork <laughs> yeah 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 we ought to have a row because they always have a row don't they and you can throw your hammer down and storm out of the workshop can he do it twice? No, he can't. No, he can't. <laughs> Luckily, when you're MIG welding, you can fill holes up. That's the problem with guesswork. You can't always do it twice. Yeah, we're not very good at guessing. <laughs> As you can see, these one, two, three, four leaves are all now nicely held together. Believe it or not, but this leaf was obtained from a firm called Tickover, who specialise in three litre capris. And as I was very much involved with three litre capris, I got involved with Tickover a few times by a bit, and I found this so good. The bloke at Tickover knows exactly what you're talking about. So he supplied us with a couple of old springs that had the dead right leaf for us to use in this 1914 car, so we'll see how it go. Most of this car has been built from stuff that I've had kicking around for years, even back to the days of my dad. When he died, he left me loads of stuff and I've never thrown it away. And we would have thought I'd have had three litre Capri spring leaf, but I didn't have one because all the spring leaves I've got are single leaf springs. 
which we used on the later to print. Am I going to get my measurement accurate? Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, well, we've got to have a row. We'd have to have a row. We've got to have a row. I was thinking going to look right, aren't we? There we go. He's going to get it scientific, so <laughs> I'd be really I'm wrong this time. <laughs> well, it's 10 o'clock now, and it's time to go and pick up Mary to make the tea. Right, well, we've got the rear springs on now, and the car's handling beautifully, and the rear springs look good, and the shock absorbers are not bottoming, so that's one part of the car done. But I've now decided the day before we go off to Chateau Empty to really look round the car, and I've found that one piece of the car leaks quite badly. So we've now decided to take it off and fit an O-ring. Just here, you can see the oil, and obviously it's held together with this pinch bolt. Unfortunately, I've got the wrong size spanner. <laughs> I think it's leaking around the outside. It would be very easy to tighten this nut up too tight, and then what would happen then, you'd crack the cast in. It was quite tight enough. You wouldn't want to go any tighter than that. There you go. Now that's the timing gears that runs the water pump and then it, that gear runs the water pump and then the shaft goes all the way up here to a bevel gear which obviously drives the camshaft which it runs along here which opens the valve and I've made this fixture up at the back here from all old parts mainly from Grand Prix Sunbeam to go into the, into the bulkhead and the other side twin spark distributor made by Delco and again it's, it's you know 1914 probably a little bit earlier or could be just slightly later but it's definitely sort of period right here we've got the bit John's machined the groove in it and we fit a very slim o-ring now this is the problem because obviously the o-ring sticks up and we want to get it in there but we don't want to cut the o-ring probably the soft hammer Wow. Oh. Looks like you've got that just right, John. So that's it. Another oil leak done, hopefully. After fixing the rear springs on the car, the car handled very well indeed. The engine was a little bit down on power and I haven't quite realised why yet. So I've taken off the ignition system and that's our next job, to wind out why this wasn't up to par. Nevertheless, the car went very well and we finished within the first third of the field. So, all in all, a very good, fun, lovely weather weekend. Success at Chateau Impney, but one of the problems was was the fact the gearbox was leaking, and so we've decided now that we've got to fix the gearbox leak in this day and age. That the people do not want you dropping oil on their track, so in this video is fixing the oil leak. Right, this is the thing that goes just here, like that, and the selector shaft slides in and out there but it's very worn inside there and I think when the gears are going round they throw the oil up into there and it comes out and runs down the side of the gearbox this goes on here and as you can see look it's very loose this end it doesn't throw any oil out this end but this end's not worn very much 
and I think this is because the oil's not being thrown at this one whereas it's being thrown at that one and I don't really want to make it a really good fit because the gearbox works so beautifully it slides from side to side so well that if we was to recondition this all these bumps and lumps on here would probably cause it to be stiff and not work so sweetly so what I'm going to do is where that comes through there like that I'm going to put something over the top of there to about here somewhere so that that is encased so the oil can't run out and then hopefully when you change gear the bit of slack means the oil will run back and it will cure it but we'll see so the next step now is to find something that goes nicely over the top of there I did find earlier a chewing gum pot that goes over there beautifully and that gave me the clue really as to where the oil was coming from so what I intend to do is make something like that in steel so that when we go racing with it we don't have a scrutineer coming up and going oh dear I don't like that pool of oil underneath there but as you can see it's a beautiful gearbox Hickey surround that for me well known man in these early cars the gearbox broke when I did it initially and he said oh I think I've found you a gearbox and he couldn't have found me a better one really it's like brand new all the gears are absolutely beautiful and it changes gear it's so good it, it really is a good gearbox it's French of course and it came from Depen Auto so I'll probably machine that out so it drops inside there I think that's what I'll do This piece of brass could easily be as old as the car because it came from uh, a steering box that uh, was rusted away. Well, that's given us a bit of raw material. So what we want to do, we want to make it so that goes in there like that. Then we can still solder it round, make a cap to go on there. Probably won't be quite as long as that. Like that. Silver sole will fly over that edge and obviously with that like that it's got a register so it can't move like that it's not going to be like that or like that we will warm the whole thing up and you put a little bit of silver sole in it and run around there like you can't believe but the next thing of course is to make a plug to go on the end of there we might have a bit of brass look at that what a bit of luck Right, we've made the cover for the gear selector so that it doesn't leak. But it occurred to me that because it had so much clearance, it was obviously leaking through there. But the fact it didn't have a breather on the gearbox, it could have been throwing the oil out as well as the air. So blocking it off like we've done would make the thing totally airtight. So that's no good because obviously that gearbox is probably made to go 20 miles an hour it's going a lot faster now and it would produce a lot of air so I've now fitted a breather pipe to the gearbox which goes to the catch tank from the dry sump tank tank <laughs> so hopefully that's a good thing and then obviously this will stop the leak from the gear selector one of the problems at Chateau Impney why it never went very well was because the spark was jumping from the old distributor cap here to here and these are obviously very rare. This is a Stutz Bearcat piece. Now, whether they make new ones of those in America, and if they do, and anybody knows where I can get some, I'd love to hear from them. They're very old. If you look at them, you can actually see the crack just there and there. So, you know, we're on borrowed time with them. But you never know. Somebody in America might um, take pity on us and tell us where to get some or even perhaps have some. In the meantime, I've put a bit of insulation just here and that seems to cure it. So with any luck, that will be all right. It certainly goes a lot better. This gearbox, we've no idea what it came from. It, we know it came from Depen Auto in Paris and we know obviously it's French, but what it came out of a van, a lorry, a car, we've no idea. 
But there's a very nice number here. I think it's 437 AF. So if anybody's got any idea what this gearbox came out of, we'd love to know, because it's a really beautiful gearbox. It changes gear, I can't believe it. It's almost like a ZF box. Obviously you have to double the clutch, but it's just beautiful. The other thing I've done is repair the seat. Because this is an original old seat. And obviously when you slide down in it, you tend to sort of use it a bit. So I've glued it up and I've used this stuff called Tiger Seal, which, you know, if you don't know about it, go and buy yourself a tube because it's just so good. I use it for everything now. I even stuck the head on one of my cars in it and never gave any trouble. So I put it in there and I put it in there and there's a, a bit of a split just here. So we've repaired that. So hopefully the old Tiger Seal will come to the rescue. All we want now is a load of money from Tiger Seal for telling you. Having spent a lifetime playing about with cars, there's many stories from touring cars to racing Bugattis. And obviously I've got a little bit of a collection of cars. And this is our very first video. So with a little bit of feedback from people, hopefully we'll make some more videos and, and perhaps include a bit of a life story as well. Anyway, this is our first video. We look forward and thanks for looking.